Hey everybody, welcome back to 80 Acres. Today, we're in the shop. We brought in the old trusty wood splitter. This is what I use to split all the wood on the property there. This is my dad's, and it's actually his dad's. So, custom, homemade, built by someone in the city, way, way back in the dawn of time. They slap on an old uh, Yamaha motor, is that well, brand new at the time, now it's nice and old, still runs perfect. But I'm gonna go through and show you guys some of the stuff that I've done to make this better, fix it, and just hopefully make it easier to use. And then later on, I'm actually gonna try and make a conveyor belt system. So basically making this into a little bit of a miniature firewood processor. Um, with the new house, we're going to be running wood heat. So I'm just trying to get everything all set up so that way we can cut, uh, split, and then haul and stack all of our firewood. Super easy, so and that way it's less work, right? That's what I'm all about. Make it nice and easy, make it nice and fast. So, I'll show you guys what I've been working on. All right, so here's a better look at the actual wood splitter itself. So you can see, obviously, the red hose has been replaced. That exploded on us a few years ago. And uh, it's essentially just the most basic of wood splitters. You've got your, uh, let's see if you can see that there. There we go. So you've got your control, you've got forward, auto return, and then it clicks back to neutral. One massive cylinder, push bar, single two-way splitter. So what I've added in the last uh, couple days here working in the shop was we added this guy. So came with just this, you know, basic pushing plate on it. And looking at it, a lot of other stuff, guys online, what they've done is they add on these wings. So this is uh, two pieces of uh, three eighths by three inch flat bar. Just random junk we had lying around in the shop. So I buzzed it together, buzzed it onto there, made it so it'll clear the edge of the, the actual tray, table, whatever you want to call this. So then now the idea is as you're splitting, a lot of times you end up with a pile up of wood that just doesn't want to fall off, especially if I'm going to have the conveyor belt set up. We need something to just keep pushing the scrap. So. That should do. The other issue that we had with this was the piston itself. Angle you guys down here. So the piston itself here, the way they designed it, it was too short. So you'd always have way too much of a gap between the actual splitting head and the piston. So a lot of times if you had a knot or you had a stubborn log that didn't want to go, you'd have to back it up put another log in behind it and then push it through or put one sideways because it wouldn't have enough room either way. So we made ourselves a nice little hillbilly extendo gadget here. So we just pulled out the pin, which was uh, from the piston into the block here and uh, found a tube that fit in a tube, found a tube that went over the shaft, welded the two together, boom, boom, two holes. There we go. Three inches longer stroke now. So it doesn't come back as far, but that doesn't matter because I mean this thing does I think up to oof, like a 28 inch log or something and we never do anything remotely close to that. And then our next little thing is this. And this is the one I'm really excited about. So this is just a table. Super simple. It just, we welded it on the sides, it pivots. It's on here with just a couple pins. And that way, if we don't like it, we can get rid of it. The arms will swing out of the way. And it can either swing down. So if you have someone working on this side, they can work here no problem. Or if you need some extra clearance, you can flip it right up. So that's, you know, sneak it in around something, whatever you want to do. But the size that it is, is it actually lines up directly with the outside of the tire. So the whole wood splitter is actually built to be off center, like the motor and everything is on this side and the actual splitting side is on that side. 
So this table lines up just nice and perfect right there with the edge of the tire. So we don't have to worry about taking this off every single time. Oh, come on. There we go. Not perfect, but it should work. And I mean, we were jumping on it. We were banging around on it. I mean, it's literally just, actually, maybe I'll show you guys here. So it is pretty simple. Three eighths bolt for the hinge point. One eighth inch and a half angle iron. Angle iron, angle iron, angle iron, angle iron, angle iron. One by one square tube. Two inch angle iron. So that's just your brace, holds it up. And then this is important here was I added this little kick. So I made it so then that way your logs won't roll off. And the idea with having these gaps in here is when you roll, say you put in a massive log, you're splitting it in half, you just throw your one half on here, you split the first half, then you roll it back over, you split the next half. But it should be big enough on top of that that you can put your half that you're not splitting on here and have someone throw on the next log for you. So you can just constantly, constantly be feeding this thing. So faster, it's always better. At least with wood splitting. And the other thing that we did was they had a goofy, goofy pin system here where when this leg, which folds up into there now, folds up for transport, folds down for when you're working, so it was all floppy floppy. It was pretty stupid design. So it had basically just a massive one of these pins that would slide through here and lock it in. And then you'd fold it up and then it would slide through in the back here, those two ones. And it was just stupid, stupid system. So we ended up, uh, I chopped off on the foot down here. Actually, there's the remnants of it. Chop that off. Goodbye, don't need that. And then boom, we just slapped on some flat bar and then we put in just a standard pin, pin through the pin. Now you put a hole through here, that holds it. And then plus with these running down on either side, keeps it way more solid. It's just got a little bit of a gap so it'll swing through. And then you flip it up and it goes into there. Way, way better. So, I mean, there's always room for improvement. So I figured that that was kind of our first place to start. Oh, and then while I was at it, opened up our uh, tank here. Took a gander as to see how much uh, hydraulic fluid we had. And uh, yeah, we were like right about there. I don't think anyone's ever looked at that before. So thank God I had some uh, leftover from the tractor there, some of that extra expensive John Deere high guard low viscosity uh, hydraulic oil that I've been using in the tractor and uh, maybe this thing will split even better than it did now with that fancy fluid in there but yeah let's get on to that conveyor belt so here's what I'm working with I got all sorts of little bits and pieces of uh, old winches for uh, boat lifts. They're all a little, little messed up, but uh, this one runs. This one's a complete unit. Gearbox, no oil, won't hold oil. Probably not going to matter for a drive system. And it's missing a fan, but I'm going to see if I can get this fan to work on that one. This one, all I need is this part. And this is the main event. This is an old piece of belting that uh, we bought at a garage sale. And it's actual conveyor belt. So it's got the grippy side and then it's got the kind of tough material type side. Different color there with a the joint. Shouldn't have to go past the joint. But here's the, here's the theory on this. Take that belt cutter in half, only need half of that belt, so I don't have to chew up too much of it. Fit that in between the roller for what would usually have the cable on it, like that one. 
Have this as your drive one. Spinny, spinny. Forward, backwards. Pretty nifty. And then have this one at the top with some adjustable gizmo thing to get it to run true with this one and set tension. And then put that on a thing and then it'll into bins or the back of the truck. And then some kind of a collector thingy and then whoop. This one, uh, this is gonna call for uh, some ink on some tree. Brain kinda hurts, drank a bunch of coffee, and think I came somewhat of a plan here. So, main important thing, six feet tall. So that should get us above the bins and above the back of the truck, whatever we're using. If we do 12 feet, shouldn't be too steep. Need some type of uh, support with a wheelie wheel, hopper thing, little foot. Have the drive drum down there with the motor on the back side of the hopper so the logs can never hit it. And then the idler one, so that's pretty uh, rough. This, we know that we need seven and a quarter wide on the belting to fit within the drums. The top drum will have tensioner things with threaded rod, so you can change them either way and get it tighter, less tight, whatever you want. Angle iron cleats, so you just bolt on angle iron. I've seen that on, uh, I think it's Don DIY did that. He just put in a whole bunch of angle iron and then that grabs your log, pulls it up. The hopper, which has to go on the front of this so that when you just keep splitting, you don't have to think about it. it needs to be four feet wide and then we'll probably just go two feet. So that way it'll just flop in and then it'll get grabbed and up it'll run. So yeah, let's see what we can make happen here. Sure. So now, 
when that, uh, this is the bottom side, conveyor should come up there, won't have a sharp edge. And then I'm going to trim those off and then that's where our top idler will be. Loop around. And I got to do the same thing on the, the other side back there. Safety first, ladies and gentlemen. Eyes and ears, mouth and nose. Tack everything first, then actually uh, give her the beans. <laughs> Throw the time lapse back on here and hammer down. And then you guys don't have to watch for the hours upon hours upon hours that this is taking me. So, here's the plan with this top roller. Switched out these long bolts that go right through to shorter ones. Put the nut inside, and that's what you saw with the screwdriver. I just did the old jam it so you could tighten it. Here's what I'm thinking. These will get welded on to there with the nut. And then, you're gonna have tabs off of this piece they go on to that, so when you tighten or loosen these nuts that will be on here, it will slide this whole thing forward and back. But to give it some strength side to side and everything, then we're going to put on a couple tracks, which are just going to be angle iron. So that will slide front and back. But this width here is going to be wider than that, which is seven, seven and a quarter. So I'm going to have to put on angle iron across the bottom to then put these across and slide that then 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 lots to do so I need two 16 inch pieces Band saw. Not super concerned about this being totally exact, but as long as they're both the same length, that's the important part. This set to be turgil speed.
Lost you guys there for a minute because the phone ran out of uh, storage on it, of course. So basically what we got going on though is I got these in here underneath. They could slide. Now I got these marked out where they're going to go through this angle iron and then be welded into this one. So I'm going to drill those first, put this in there, and then weld it on to this. So I just got to get the drill set up and I'll drill those out. Okay, update you on what's happened. Got that all sorted out. It's all adjustable. So that's the idea there is that against this angle iron, it'll move back and forth. This one is kind of just to hold the rod from flexing out. Got the strap cut down. So we ended up, we cut two strips out of it. And this is how I'm joining it. I saw this same thing on Dawn DIY. So it's just two pieces of angle iron back to back. And you use uh, carriage bolts. So on the bottom side, you can see they're not going to rub too bad on anything. But yeah, then I, uh, that's the two pieces together. Pulled it tight, marked it, cut it. Now I'm going to make another one of those. Pull it, bolt that together. Then we can do a test run. See if it even works at all. If it works, then we'll keep going. Okay, another update for you guys. Slapped some legs on it, brought it up to height. It's got some socket adjustable tubes there. And then, now I'm just trying to figure out what we want to do for our uh, hopper, or whatever you want to call it. So the idea is the wood will come, fall into there, get grabbed, sh up it'll go. I did have a problem with the belt making it around when it got to the joints. So I believe what was happening is when it was trying to go around that radius with this being, you know, three inches flat, it didn't want to actually get over top of that. So I think I'm just going to have to put it in the vise, bend that should be good. And then I'm also going to rough this up right now. It's super smooth. I'm going to tear it up with something, get it nice and grippy. Maybe uh, hit it with the grinder, get it all ugly looking but then it'll have nice traction and then got to put some sides on and test her again
Oh, it's so beautiful. My goodness.